Want to play with friends even when you're apart? Here are 10 of the best remote play games you can pick up right now. Local co-op is perfect when you have friends sitting beside you. But as we're all usually a lot busier than we'd like to be, that rarely happens. However, what if I told you that your old friend Couch Co-op is coming to you online? Okay, so that just sounds like playing online games, but Steam's new remote play feature means you can enjoy your favorite games with friends without everyone needing a copy or a gaming PC at home. Just like local multiplayer, one person hosts the game and all the friends join, but now from the comfort of their own home. Friends can join on a laptop, phone or tablet, so no matter their setup, you can still enjoy working together to solve puzzles. Or exactly the opposite. I'm not here to judge. And best of all, it's totally free. So here are 10 games that make the most of remote play with friends. At first glance, Wilmot's warehouse might look like work. With all those small squares and that black space, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was an edutainment video from the 1980s. But please, I beg of you, don't write Wilmot's warehouse off. Because once you ease into this wholesome, wonderfully addictive organism up, you will not be able to stop. Better still, Teaming up with a friend via remote play adds an entirely new element to this organizational challenge. What you might see as a Christmas bauble, another person will see as a Death Star. Snowflakes and igloos go in the winter pile. Fezzes and Stetsons go to hats. But what about winter hats? These are the decisions you'll have to make together, and it can feel like a frightening peek inside another person's troubled psyche. And if you don't believe me, just watch Matt and Louise's Let's Play. It's dark. Most of the games on this list offer traditional teamwork or straight up friendship bothering betrayal. Deru, however, encourages you and a friend to think laterally. This gorgeous minimalist puzzler looks deceptively simple. The black triangle can't touch black lines and vice versa. But once you reach your first nightmarish lattice of monochrome lines, you'll begin to understand the genius of Deru. It's not just about solving the puzzles, it's about explaining what you're trying to do to a teammate who might not understand your plan. In that respect, it's also brilliant at encouraging clear communication as you try to explain exactly which white line it is that you're trying to block. And if you ever get bored of that, you can do what Matt did and take every opportunity to move out the way and cast your would-be teammate into oblivion. So much for the art of cooperation. If you like games that let you pummel your friends into the ground, then you'll love Cruel. Each player battles it out to be the hero who has to face a fearsome dungeon. The best part? Everyone else then takes on the role of monsters that lurk therein. You can trap them in webs as a spider, burn them with flames as a cursed ghost, or just wail on them as a skeleton, landing as many punches as possible. Nothing is more satisfying than bringing your friends down when they're on top. And yes, you get to be the boss too. Controlling individual limbs and attacks, everyone left will join forces to bring down the lucky adventurer. With a procedurally generated dungeon and the satisfaction of taking down your friends, you'll be able to replay again and again until your friendships fall apart. Why? 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 We've said it before, but it's worth reiterating. Rocket League is the best football game without feet. If you haven't played it, it's the sort of classic upskilling journey that we've come to love from games. At first, you're terrible, barely able to connect big bouncy ball with slidey remote controlled vehicle. Then gradually, you start to get better. You save a few goals, maybe bang a few balls in the top corner, and you get cocky. You begin to think you're some kind of Rocket League savant. 
and it's not until you try to score your first mid-air boost goal that you realize how deeply average you actually are. But fear not, Rocket League is so good and so moorish that you'll keep playing for hundreds if not thousands of hours, even if you're more pub five-a-side team than Premier League. Add in a trusted friend to shout at when things go wrong, and you have one of the best multiplayer experiences online. Video games have gifted us with numerous iconic spacecraft. The Normandy from Mass Effect, the Pillar of Autumn from Halo, and, of course, the electric pink intergalactic bowling ball from lovers in a dangerous spacetime. But whereas the former craft represent the pinnacle of human engineering, the ship here is custom designed to make everything difficult in exactly the right sort of way. Play it with another person and lovers becomes a passive aggressive jaunt through a galaxy of gorgeous bright colors where you can gently hint at all the things your partner is getting wrong. Didn't feel like blocking those projectiles, Louise? Cool, you're piloting us into the rocks now, Matt. Great work. I'll remember you both so fondly as I'm suffocating in the cold void of space. Luckily, the game is so cute and so good that it's impossible to stay angry at it or your inept teammates. Aww. Imagine playing Tetris competitively against your friends and also you're a wizard. Well, that's pretty much tricky towers. Colorful blocks glide down from the sky and you have to fit them nicely together. But your rival sorcerers will cast spells to stop you rotating bricks, use moss to distract you, or just throw random items like a piano at you. Cool. There are three game modes, from puzzles, a race to the sky, and survival that means any block dropped is a life lost. The physics of Tricky Towers really sets it apart though. If you're a little careless, like me, you'll soon find your towers topple over, taking down all your hard work. Every brick needs careful consideration, lest you end up with a dreaded, unfixable block slide. But let's not talk about the slide, it's still too painful. Pack your robes, take to the skies, and start stacking some bricks. You can play Trine for solo, but like any good adventure, it pays to have friends along with you. Together, you can take on the role of Amadeus the Wizard, Pontius the Knight, and Zoya the Thief to defeat monsters with your magic boxes, pointy swords, and badass bow and arrow. Only when you combine each of their skills by taking on individual roles will you get through a level. But when you're not fighting to survive, you'll be solving puzzles to get through the ever-changing environment. One moment you can be battling mages and haunted tombs, and the next meeting friendly bears in blueberry forests. But each experience will be equally enjoyable. That's the charm of Trine, and with friends at your side, you'll spend hours getting lost in its magical world. It's safe to say you'll be telling stories of your escapades in taverns for years to come, ideally with good friends at your side. Many multiplayer games are about trust. Do you trust your partner to always be there for you? Do you trust them to help you traverse the gaping chasm? And do you trust them not to swing you face first into a wall of pin sharp spikes? Heave Ho, as you might have guessed from the first 10 seconds of this entry, is all about finding joy in failed cooperation. It's a celebration of how good games feel when they absolutely nail the swinging physics. And it's about those glorious, fleeting seconds when you think you might actually make it to the next handhold just before your idiot character sails fecklessly past toward an explosive, colourful death. Play this online with your buddies and you'll develop a new understanding of how they can't tell their left from their right and how you absolutely, definitely can't trust them. Don't believe their lies. Put on your chef's hat and if you've never played Overcooked 2 before, get ready to shout. 
in this cooking game, everything you do from walking to picking up utensils to actually cooking something is a challenge. And like the saying goes, too many cooks in one kitchen can most definitely spoil your friendship broth. Or something like that. At first, you'll be facing off the clock, just making sure correct orders are delivered before hangry guests get bored. But quickly magic, moving floors and lots of fire will become your true challenge. However, when you have a bowl full of spaghetti to go and one of your layabout sous chefs gets in the way and causes it to plummet off a cliff, your inner Gordon Ramsay will come out. They are the true enemy and also an idiot sandwich. Overcooked is, in a sense, a test of your friendship to see not only if you can work together, but also if you ever want to again. It's fun, honest. Let me start out by saying that this game has a dedicated quack button. And honestly, that's all you need to know about it. Oh, you want more? In the far, far future of 1984, a sci-fi topia has developed. Whether that's a utopia or a dystopia is up to your opinion on ducks fighting. I can't quite decide. But what I do know is I love putting a hat on my duck and heading out for glory in over 50 battlefields. Each turn lands you somewhere new with a stash of weapons to use to bring down your foul foes. But it's not all about who gets the biggest gun first. In Duck Game, you can use your strategic prowess to make even a sword beat a bazooka. If you're fast and capable, that is. Or if you're me, you just wave a sword around madly until you end up a pile of feathers thanks to a long range shot. Quack. <laughs> So there you go, a selection of incredible multiplayer games that will let you enjoy jolly cooperation even if you can't be together. And there are loads of other titles we could mention. Crypt of the Necrodancer, Human Fall Flat, The Binding of Isaac Reber, Cuphead, Catastronauts and more. Check the description for a full list. For more videos just like this, subscribe to Logitech G. And if you do already subscribe, hit the bell so you never miss when another video lands.